Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So I do have a few more small details that I definitely needed to add to the Roaming House laundry room. In part seven, we did the laundry room clothes chute and the washboard, and I even repurposed the basket. But now we have to get to those finer details, the details and personal things that really bring the room to life. Now, dolls, this is going to be a video where I'm actually going to allow you to just watch me play. I'm bringing together some of the accessories that I've collected or I want to use in the laundry room. And I made a few pieces and I'm going to distress and enhance a few pieces, but everything I'm preparing it so I can begin to assemble the details in the laundry room. Now, these are two little wash pans that I had that I've been wanting to use but they look a little bit too new, so I'm gonna have to scuff them up and rough them up a little. I've got a couple flower pots here, some jars, a couple irons. I even have another plunger that I thought would definitely be something that you would find in the laundry room. So I'm just looking at gathering all my pieces. I even had some little boxes of washing powder and these are some vintage boxes, a box of starch. Now these are all little small accessories that I've collected over the course of the time that I've been preparing for this project. And dolls, that's what collecting is all about, just gathering together all the small details that create one big story or one big picture. I have a little set of keys that I put together, a little broom that I made earlier, and some other little in odds and ends that I've just saved over the years. So these are the types of things you wanna do, dolls. That's even a towel rack that I made a long time ago before I start making towel racks with earring backs. And here are some little hooks that I bought and distressed for this project. So these are all my little things that are possibilities for my accessories for the rooming house. Now, although I said this video didn't have a lot of instructional portions to it, there were some ideas that did come up in the midst of my play. I looked at the rest of that little scrap piece of wood and I thought it would be a really, really great quick little coat rack. Now I got these two little flower pots from the Ann Arbor Miniature Show and I just bought them in a bundle. I had no idea what I was going to use them for, but I think they're going to work out perfect for this project. Now this is a little random box I made a long time ago. I was going to make it be like a shoe polish box for one of the men's rooms, but I think it might look good on the floor in the rooming house laundry room. So I used a color called Pueblo to paint these pots. It's sort of a terracotta like orange and I figure a couple good coats of this it'll make these look like actual ceramic baked ceramic rather than wood and after the paint dries I'll dirty them up a little bit mm -hmm. and many times dolls you have the things that you need for a project but sometimes they just need to be repurposed or enhanced to fit the story of the scene that you're creating so always look around at what you have before you go to buy some things because sometimes what you need, you already bought it. You just didn't know what you were going to do with it. <laughs> so this little wooden box looked pretty bad on its own, but I wanted it to little, look a little bit more murky. And I added the alcohol and paint wash to it. And then I went on to add the very same alcohol and acrylic paint wash to this little metal tub because I want it to look dirty and well used. And I'm actually going to rust it out a little bit too. It's a lovely little pan, but it looks way too new and bright to fit into an old rooming house laundry room. The distressing and aging will make it look more natural in my scene. Now I have another little white wash pan and I've had it for years and really never knew what to do with it. And at first I thought it was more of a pot, but it's actually a wash pan or a foot pan. But either way, I definitely think it'll look very natural hanging on the wall of an old rooming house laundry room. So I definitely wanted to make it look as though the enamel was cracked or um, distressed and aged. 
I started with a little of the alcohol and black paint wash and just kind of dripped and drizzled in in certain places, places that I thought it would look natural, naturally worn or chipped. I always saw pots like that were chipped at the bottom or around the sides. So I'm going to allow that to dry before I go further with the distressing process. And then I began to look at the little irons. They looked a little new and bright as well. I looked at the handles and thought the handles are metal and that might get kind of hot if the dolls are ironing for a long time. So I wrapped the handles of the irons with masking tape. I thought that would look as though they had wrapped something around it to protect their hands. I thought that looked a little vintage. Now both of these irons I purchased. Maybe one day I'll be ambitious enough to actually make an iron. But I just wanted to distress this a little bit more and I'm using the alcohol and paint wash on it just to kind of make it look a little bit more old and more vintage. And I dirtied up the little tape on top to make it look like it was some well-worn cloth wrapped around those handles to protect their hands. And I also added the wash to those little terracotta flower pots that I just painted. I think that makes them look better as if they've been used and possibly brought in from the yard or the garden and just set them on a shelf in the laundry room instead of throwing them away. You know how we do dolls. <laughs> yes, I definitely think the terracotta paint and the little black wash made a big difference in the way they look when you compare them to just looking like little wooden pots. They look way more authentic and realistic now. Always keep in mind, dolls, a little paint and a lot of imagination can go a long way. So here I start playing again, dolls, just trying to imagine some of the little pieces on the actual shelves. Now, these shelves are very simple. One is a piece of crown molding and the other one is a popsicle stick with a bracket under it. Always make sure your shelves are big enough to hold the items you plan on putting on them. Now let's get back to that enamel pan. So now that the alcohol and paint wash has dried, I want to actually use some of the black testers paint to give the impression that there's another layer under the imaginary chip. Now this testers paint actually is enamel, so it's got a little body to it, so it actually show up with another dimension. So I really think it gives a realistic look on top of the alcohol and acrylic wash. Now, dolls, I do apologize. This is all the way out of frame. Sometimes I get lost in my work and I forget about the camera. So that's what was happening here. But I was adding the black around the top of the rim of the little pot and on the bottom to give, like I said, a dimensional look to the imaginary chipped portions. So just remember, dolls, when you're aging metal, especially something that looks enamel, use the alcohol and paint wash first. After that dries, come back with some enamel paint for the dimensional look. Now, I wanted to add a little rust to this um, aluminum looking wash pan. So I took some of that color that's called Pueblo and I just kind of like dry brushed it on portions of the edge and around the top. I'll show it to you a little bit better where you can see how I put it around the handles and just kind of just rubbed it with my fingers in areas that I thought that rust would kind of naturally occur. And I just kind of stippled it in and rubbed it with my fingers. And I just tried to imagine where rust would probably naturally occur around the sides, or around the rim, you know, in a room that's moist and damp. I definitely think an aluminum pan would get like, you know, rust residue on it. And I rubbed a little bit around the bottom and again, rubbed it in with my fingers. So you just have to use your imagination dolls. Um, either use your imagination or find a picture for inspiration. But yeah, I think that looks a little better. Now, although I don't want the inside to be really dirty, I definitely want it to look as though it has been used. So I'm just going to swipe the black paint and alcohol wash around a little bit and then wipe it out really quick just to give it like I said a used residue. I'm not going to put any rust really on the inside because I wouldn't want to wash my clothes in a rusty pan so I don't want that for my dolls either. 
but I really think that makes this pan look a lot more realistic and more authentic. And I think it'll blend in much better in an old laundry room with the little rust and dirt on it. That'll look great on the wall. So as I mentioned about the little coat rack, so this is the last of that little scrap piece that I used in the previous video. If you haven't seen the video about the laundry chute and the washboard, definitely check it out in my playlist. So I'm just trimming it up to make sure the piece of wood look, you know, relatively even. It's not going to be perfect dolls, but it is going to be cute. So I just shaved the extra off the edges. And dolls, always be cautious when you're using a blade with your fingers. Be very, very, very cautious because that blade is unforgiving. So then I wanted to just kind of bevel the ends of it. So when you want to bevel a piece of wood, you just want to hold it firmly and press it down and drag it in one direction. Don't go back and forth, but hold it kind of and drag it and kind of sweep it up, if that makes any sense. Drag and sweep, but only in one direction. But it really gave it a really nice beveled edge, and I thought that would give a little distinction to the little coat rack. I just put a little dot of glue and just kind of spread that one dot in three places on the little strip of wood. I took my little metal hooks and just placed them really, really quick there. I didn't do a lot of spacing or sizing or anything like that. Yeah, I definitely eyeballed it, but I thought it was a pretty simple piece. The wood wasn't that big, so I didn't think it was very much room for a whole lot of error. But I just tried to make sure that they were spaced evenly, so if there were three things hanging, everything wouldn't be all bunched together. So let's allow that to dry. And let's go ahead and look at this pot. So the black enamel has dried, it's dry enough to handle, so I can move on to the third phase of the aging of the little enamel pot, and that would be the rust. So when I went to the, the went about to do the rust dolls, I added a little bit of alcohol to that Pueblo color and made it kind of watery like I do the black wash and just again stippled it around in areas that I thought rust would naturally occur. And I guess I've seen so many rusted and distressed pieces. This was kind of something I could just do straight from my imagination. But I just allowed the rust to kind of be around the edges of the parts that had been blackened or looked as though they were chipped. And again, this is one of those projects dolls that you have to be careful. You can definitely get carried away. I could have had a totally fully rusted piece, but I tried to just, like I said, focus it on the areas that I had dripped the black wash on and the parts that I had added the extra dimension of enamel to, to just really, like I said, heighten or enhance those areas to confirm that those were the areas that were really affected a great deal. Maybe I should do a video about all the wonderful ways I age and distress my miniatures. <laughs> I think this is really going to look great on the wall in the Roman house. I'm so excited about putting all these pieces together. Let me hurry up and get done. I'm having way too much fun. I almost forgot to add a little bit of the rust to the inside of the lip. Now, dolls, we're going to let that dry. And let's get back to this little coat rack. So now I definitely want it to look really aged and distressed. So I'm using black and brown and alcohol and everything because I want it to look a little bit like maybe the coat rack is a little bit um, rotted or that the wood is a little moldy because it's been up there so long. So I want it to look really, really dark and really, really old and really, really distressed. So again, I'm using a mixture of the brown and black with the alcohol wash and really just slapping it on there in no particular way. It really looks a mess, but when it dries, it's going to look great. So I'll leave that to dry. So now I just want to play with the little shelf a little while because I want to arrange some of the things on it before I actually glue it to the wall. Now I'm not going to glue the items to the wall. I'm going to put the mini wax on it, but I just want to see how the items will look or arrange them in a way that'll be interesting to look at. 
Now that's a little piece of new upholstery that I actually painted to look like a bottle. It's just a filler piece, dolls. I use everything. Keep in mind, dolls, when you're filling shelves or cabinets, everything doesn't have to be perfect. Filler pieces will never be seen, but they actually add dimension to your look. Now here, dolls, I'm just trying a lot of different pieces to see what will look best on those shelves and what will fit and make sense in the scene. I've got the flower pots and the starch, the little newel post, an iron. I actually had another bottle on there, but I realized after a while it was too heavy and it was going to look a little out of scale. It always works to do what I call, I guess, dry fit, try fit to see how it will work. And then you won't be disappointed when you actually get in there to put everything together. And again, here I am with my large globs of wax. <laughs> and so here I am. I believe I've gotten together my first shelf with several of the little items that I had collected. And I thought that would look natural in a laundry room on the shelf above the sink. So let's see how everything works together. And so here's a close up. This is my first setup of that first shelf. So let's go ahead and put it in the room. So first I'm gonna start, I put a nail on the wall. So I wanna hang my little aluminum pan. And that's just some of those brass pins that I use when I, um, when I make hinges for the furniture. And I put one here on the wall to hang the ironing board. And here I am about to put my little laundry chute door in and I decided I would put it right next to that aluminum pan in between the aluminum pan and the shelves. I thought that was a good place because I'm going to put the washing machine just below that. So I think that will be good. And I've already installed the top shelf. That laundry chute's going to need a little filler. Oh, I have one more thing that I need to add to the room before I'm finished. My little coat rack. So let me move the ironing board. I want to put this little coat rack right next to the dining room door. Now remember the little coat rack that I made? So I've already added glue to it. So I'm going to just put it right below the beadboard. And I'm just going to put a little light here on it so you dolls can see. Okay, that's better. That's a little bit clearer. I think that looks really great. And you see the pot hanging on the wall and the ironing board and our little basket. And take quick note of my little burlap rug. <laughs> so dolls, I've had so much fun. I have one more video to finish out the laundry room series. And that will be the finale, which has to do with the actual laundry. Now dolls, if you've enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments. Also like, share, and subscribe. And you can always look for me on Mondays and Wednesdays after 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. What did I do with my little washboard? Oh, there it is. I tucked it away next to the hot water tank. I think that'd be the perfect place to tuck a washboard that's not used that often now that they have the ringer washing machine. <laughs> I just want to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of my subscribers. I appreciate you, all your comments, the interaction. And I also want to say thank you to those of you who haven't subscribed, but you're watching. I appreciate you as well. Dolls, I always enjoy making these videos for you. That's why I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.